He's heating up! Hey there everyone, it's Vash here, and I'm not sure if you heard, but last night, in the middle of the night, uh, at TGS, uh, Konami finally showed off the gameplay for Metal Gear Survive, and here I am to talk about many of the features that I saw in the game that I'll be pointing out and maybe speculating and saying like, oh, maybe this will work that way. I'll also be giving my thoughts on how the game looks in the gameplay, giving overall how I feel about it and, you know, what are we going to do about it and stuff like that. So the first thing I want to talk about is from the intro, it shows the four co-op partners just teleport into a map. Now, with it looking like that, and them also saying that, like, you have to progress through missions to continue the story. To me, that looks like it's gonna be kinda like, uh, just Metal Gear Solid V with its, like, you just pick a mission, you partner up, maybe there'll be matchmaking to partner up with other people, but when they were saying, like, open world zombie survival, um, so zombie survival game, I assumed that it was just going to be open world, but technically, it's not. Maybe, they'll probably have, like, other menu things, because remember in MGS5 it was, the exa it was the exact same way, you'd pick an area on the map and you would land and you can technically go wherever you want, but I expected it when they talked about it to be like you'd be in a base, um, like mother base, your, you know, your, your other rebuilt mother base, and you would select missions from your iDroid and then travel to where you gotta go jump in jeeps, cars, use wormholes, and travel like I thought it was all gonna be in real time but I'm sure with the way it looks right here it's probably gonna be just like MGS5 where like you maybe you sit in a calm room and you or you sit at a table like you sit somewhere and you pull out your iDroid you do the mission you teleport to it so from the beginning of that that's what it looked like um, also uh, there's a new status menu in the iDroid next to the map now so in the status menu they, you can clearly see that there is a life and stamina bar, which is right below a hunger and thirst meter. Now we ain't talking thirst like when you be thirsting for that girl, you're like, we talking straight up like, like water. So you're gonna have to eat and you're gonna have to drink. Now we don't know if this meter is gonna go down over time. We don't know if like each mission you lose 15%, so you have to make sure you collect water and food to, you know, make yourself go back to normal. Um, as you're traveling around, but uh, from the way it looks, which they didn't show in the demo because they didn't show any health management in the devil in the demo except for a part where uh, one of the characters got attacked and hurt his ankle. In which then that's another point is they showed the the way you can heal yourself. It's kind of like MGS3 where you go into a menu and you heal specific body parts that are damaged because when certain body parts are damaged, it hinders your gameplay. It makes uh, creates disadvantages for your character, but um, they also showed the weapons in the <clears throat> in the menu, which looks like there's no ammo count, which is kind of weird. All the weapons had a durability, so I'm thinking that maybe all the weapons will have infinite ammo, and they just wear down over time, and once you hit zero, the weapon just breaks and you can't use it anymore. Uh, they also showed that all the clothing also has a durability to them also, which means you have to constantly craft clothing and armor to use while you're playing. Uh, you can also see a weight meter at the bottom of the screen, which I guess determines your movement speed on how much you're carrying, which in general, how much you can just, you can actually physically carry. Gameplay. Gameplay. Gameplay-wise, this game looks almost identical to MGS5's gameplay. The multiplayer gameplay, at least. Well, I mean, the multiplayer gameplay was the same thing. It's it's just, it's the exact same. Just like we said, it's a zombie for, it's a zombie, yeah, what the hell? It's a zombie survival game using the Fox Engine. It's using all the exact same animations. The only new things that I've noticed is like the pose system, like when they give each other like thumbs up, but that was an MGO. Uh, the melee weapons, they, they have like spears and machetes and stuff like that. And it looks kind of stiff and goofy, which isn't bad, but it's there. That's something new. Um, as you can see in one of the scenes right here that I'll put, you can see them uh, using one of the new weapons, which is a slingshot, which you use to hit the horn of the creatures, which is another thing we gotta talk about. They're not called zombies, they're called creatures. But when you hit the creature's horn, it stuns him, and another player runs up on him and kicks him into a spike wall, which looked really kind of funny. In addition to <clears throat> the melee weapons, they showed the bow and arrow, which looks like crap. The bow and arrow looks absolutely terrible. Now, before I say this, I know people are going to be like, you're stupid, you're stupid, but 
The bow and arrow looks almost as bad as the bow and arrow in The Last of Us. Now let me finish talking before you start flipping out. The bow and arrow in The Last of Us when you first got it, when it was unupgraded, was terrible. You had to upgrade like the sway and everything, like the, the weapon sway and stuff. It was bad, but it wasn't as bad as this looks. This looks really bad. Like you just literally like <laughs> little arrows are, like falling. It's like it's like she's throwing the arrows at. <laughs> like it's like the arrow. Like I, I'm hoping you can upgrade that to make it more deadly. I expect like if you're shooting an arrow, it has that like thunk. Like you know, like that really like ugh, like it penetrating hit. But like the the arrows are like floating, and like the the way the I don't know the the arrow the bow and arrow looks like something that you'd really have to get used to which I'm sure will probably become extremely in handy later on in the game or in the game in general because uh, if you watch the demo the they try their best to be quiet at certain points to not attract more creatures around and I'm sure that like suppressors and stuff are gonna be really hard to come by so you're just gonna have to use a bow and arrow but I'm hoping that there's a way you can upgrade that because it looks terrible it looks absolutely terrible now let's talk about the creatures. The creatures in the game looked like they look like just reskins of the parasite victims from the side ops in MGS5. You know, like sometimes they have those side ops where they're like, oh, there's a bunch of parasite things, ghosts or whatever they were called, hanging around in this area, go and kill them. It it looks just like that, just they like edited the AI to be more aggressive. It looks like literally exactly the same. Speaking of things being exactly the same, the map that they're playing on is a just a reskin of a MGS5 map, which makes sense. I mean, this is just an alternate dimension of what you're already in in MGS5, so it makes sense, but at least it looks a little bit different and it's not literally just a just one-to-one -one reskin as you can see in certain parts in the demo, you can see that like walls are broken. There's like this big crane thing that's destroyed. Like at least they added things here and there and reskinned it, but overall the map is just the same, uh, I think it was Afghanistan, the, sta the same map from MGS5. I'm guessing maybe we'll go to the jungle after a certain point and then it'll be just a modified jungle. Hopefully it will be more than that, but if it's only that too, I, I guess. Oh, you can collect random objects laying around like pots, pans, buckets, uh, just anything you can pick up to use as crafting materials for the later parts in the game to maybe make, uh, I don't know, armor pieces, or later on they show like a defensive part where they use materials to create like barriers and fences, so you can pick all that stuff up. Let's see, uh, it looks like you can use, they show that you can use the Fulton Cannon, uh, the Fulton Cannon to extract things, um, I take that back, you can't extract things, they show it where they lure a a sheep over to the Fulton Cannon, which I believe the Fulton Cannon was exclusive to MGO. It then launches the the sheep in the air, which attracts a bunch of creatures for them to take out where they're trying to get the sheep. Eventually the bubble, the Fulton balloon pops and they use a warp to then transport the sheep from back to Mother Base, which uh, looks like you can only use, I guess, the warp. I mean, that's not a big deal, but... I guess that goes in with the whole like warp and wormhole and all that weird stuff that's going on. Uh, it also looks like that there is now a threat ring around your character at all times. One thing I remember while learning about and watching the development of MGS5, there were a lot of times where they said that they tried their hardest to not have a HUD uh, on screen because having a HUD will break immersion to some extent. So it looks like they have a modified threat ring around them like from MGS4 which will have the compass on it north, south, east, east, and west. And also during the combat sections, it has where it'll point out where enemies have spotted you or where enemies may have been like brought to your attention. So it's like a way without having to pull out your eye droid to look at a map constantly to know where to go. Cause like, I guess maybe you could pull out your map and say, we need to head north. And you can constantly always know where north is with the new threat ring. Now the defensive stages, so they sh at the beginning of the demo they showed an attack stage pretty much where they're trying to get inside of an area to place a beacon that once they get in the area and place the beacon, they then have to defend the point in which they then show off that certain objects, objects, certain objectives can be passed along uh, in between the partners. So for example, while there's three partners protecting the beacon, there's one partner that's sneaking around collecting uh, groups of materials that landed that another player marked on their map from a higher vantage point. 
that looks really interesting. The whole aspect of the teamwork looks like a lot of fun. It just sucks that 90% of the time, and that's not how it works unless you're playing with uh, friends that take stuff like that seriously, which, you know, I, I mean, it's fun to play it like that, but I mean, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Like seriously, come on, we're not gonna we're not gonna play it like that. But seeing it like that was really, really interesting. So they showed a character going from spot to spot, collecting things, sneaking around while everyone else is fighting them off. Now during these defensive stages, it made the bow and arrow look even worse. <laughs> I mean, oh my god, the bow and arrow was by far it just looks disgustingly just puny and gross. So hopefully they please change that or upgrade it or something. There's a crafting table inside one of the buildings which allows you to create stuff like fences and barriers and mounted guns to protect and defend your point. That looked really interesting. They showed how they put out like little fences to kind of stop the creatures from coming to give them enough time to use his spear. They showed one where a guy put a fence and they showed like the properties of the fence being, you know, most games when zombies like, s or creatures, excuse me, are slapping a fence. Um, while they're slapping the fence, it just has a durability that slowly goes down, but according to what they said in the demo preview, that the barriers like that, like the fence, will have a uh, durability on weight. So the most, the more uh, creatures that push on the fence, the more the fence will start to give out, just kind of, you know, like, like real life. You know, it's kind of silly when a zombie's just slapping a wall and the durability's going down, you know, like, or hugging it or humping it, whatever. But the more enemies that lean on it, it'll become warped, it'll start to bend, it'll get weaker and weaker until it falls over and the creatures can burst through. So it looks like you have to go to a crafting bench before you create these things, and then you go outside and you use, like, a wormhole thing to place them where you want to place them. And that part actually looked really, really cool. Now with that, that's all I really had to say about uh, Metal Gear. Sur Metal Gear. Why do I say it like that? Metal Gear Survive. I guess the good. Let's. I guess let's talk about like the goods and bads about it. Now the goods is, I did hear that it will not be a full price game. It will probably be around thirty to forty dollars. Could be less. Could be more. Could be fifty. I don't know. I'm totally down if it's half price. If it's thirty, forty bucks. I mean, I went in watching this demo with little to no expectations. I kind of expected it to just look like ass, and I was not disappointed. I mean, I'm sure people are like, how dare you? This is Metal Gear. The, there's a point in your life when you just get to the, you just, you're like, who cares? If it's fun, just play it. I mean, it's not like it's Metal Gear Solid 6 the zombie edition it's obviously just a spin-off just like metal gear acid which was a lot of fun but it was just metal gear acid or like metal gear revengeance that game was was friggin awesome like that game was awesome as hell but it was not a metal gear solid game it was still fun to play that's how i view this game it's just a i mean in concept it sounds great a zombie for survival game in the fox engine which is literally that they're giving us. Um, they're reusing a lot of the same assets from MGS5, especially from the multiplayer, which I, I guess doesn't bother me. It's, it's overall the game, MGS5, as much of a disappointment as it was, story-wise, gameplay-wise, it was still a lot of fun to play, to me at least. And using those mechanics and gameplay into a new setting with new blah, 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 blah. It, it, it's whatever, especially if it's only gonna be like 30 or 40 bucks. This looks like something I'd pick up and play with a couple of my friends and dick around, poke zombies, try to kill a dude with them, like, in the most inhumane way possible. I don't know. It, just, it looks like fun. It looks like something that you can just say, okay, sweet, let's play some... I'm not gonna be like, oh man, I just, I just can't wait to find out the story and the plot. Like, it, it's nothing like that. It just looks like a lot of fun to play. So I probably will be picking this up if it's like 40 If it's $60, I don't know about that. I may have to trade in some stuff or something, but if it's like 40 bucks, that's not a big deal at all. The things I don't like about it, though, is that I, I it's kind of, it kind of sucks that you know, Konami is just banking in on the Metal Gear license, which they could have easily made a new IP. They could have made this its own game. They could have literally called it anything else and left everything exactly the same. This could have been a DLC for Metal Gear Solid 5. Remember Red Dead Lost in Nightmare? It's like a zombie spinoff to like, how stupid does that sound? A zombie spinoff to a 
Western game. Of course, there's always something about, like, zombies and Westerns. There's always been, like, a thing with zombies and everything, but that DLC, as crazy and different as it was, it was amazing, and it was 20 bucks. This game, instead of being announced as a standalone spinoff, should have been a D, like, a, even a soul, they could have sold this as the Cap, I was about to say Capcom, oops, because I'm looking at a Resident Evil picture, my bad. <laughs> Konami easily could have marketed this as a brand new, it could have just been called Survive, or Foxhound Survive, not even Foxhound, because that would be Metal Gear, Fox Survive, what the, f like, it just could have been called Survive. It could have just been a DLC for MGS5, which it literally looks like. Just a DLC for MGS5. And it wouldn't have gotten as much hate and so much backlash as it did. Because it's just obvious that Konami is just trying to just... They're just... Konami is... is They're messing up big time. <laughs> they're just really messing up. And people are calling them out on their on their BS. They really are, but I mean, that's the only negatives that I see about it, besides like the terrible looking bow and arrow, the kind of goofy looking, you know, combat, uh, the melee combat, which isn't really that big of a deal anyway, who cares? But I mean, overall, there really, really isn't a lot bad here, besides like just them reusing a lot of assets and just reskins and stuff. I mean, with that, it could have just been a DLC and it probably wouldn't have even been that big of a deal. I'm positive. If they would have just said like, new Metal Gear Solid, Five DLC alternate timeline people would have probably went bananas still there would have been people that were upset like where's MGS 6 what about the ending of MGS 5 what about chapter 3 like of course there would be there's you can't make everyone happy but I think if they would have went that route with it being more of an add-on DLC that's gonna be 20 30 bucks instead of a whole standalone game because people view it as like man they could be taking this time and effort into actually finishing the story of MGS 5 or making something new that isn't just reusing what they already have but I mean that's how people see it like I said before guys it doesn't bother me that much that much it was fun to make fun of when they first announced this because it sounded really stupid but when you think about it behind the stupidness of the announcement a f a Fox Engine zombie survival game sounds pretty good and from the gameplay they showed us it looks decent I'm on board I mean if it's 40 bucks you got me I'm buying it it's gonna be fun I'm gonna play it with my friends and I'm gonna enjoy it so please in the comment section below let me know what you guys think I know that a lot of you are big Metal Gear fans and I know a lot of you are very vocal and a lot of you are very angry so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say do you think it looks fun Will you be getting it? Will you be passing on it? Will you wait till it's cheaper? Will you buy it used because you don't want Konami to get any of your money? Let me know what you what you think about it. What are things that you like about the new features like the thirst, thirst, thirsty, the thirst and the hunger meters and how you can like MGS3 your own leg and stuff and like the new features that they've added into this. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear what you got to say. Thank you for listening to me ramble for like 17 minutes. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. In the description, I will put a link to the whole 15 minutes of gameplay you can watch with English subtitles because it was shown at TGS. It is all in Japanese. When I downloaded the video, I could not download the subtitles, which is why I had to talk to you about it over it. But thank you guys again for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.